In this video, we'll explore Technion's recent successful capital raise of 175 million Swedish kronor and its plans to acquire five new companies annually. We'll also look into Technion's financing structure, how they support acquired companies and the challenges of valuing a unique company like Technion. Join us to get insights into Technion's recent developments and strategies. In recent developments, Technion has successfully completed a substantial capital raise, securing 175 million Swedish kroner, which translates to approximately 60 million US dollars. This impressive feat was made possible through the investment of several prominent entities, including Phoenician Capital from the USA, Braddock Partners, uh, which is advised by Acre Capital Management and basically is the same firm, uh, Woodlock House Family Capital from Chris Mayer, uh, Spilton Invests from Sweden and REQ Capital from Norway and Axiom. The need for such a significant capital infusion stems from Technion's strategic objective to acquire approximately five new companies annually each contributing an estimated 1 million US dollars to the company profits. While the company has been steadily generating cash flow from its operations, the path to acquiring these new companies is not always linear. This unpredictability in the timing of acquisitions necessitated the recent capital raise. Daniel, Technion's spokesperson, highlighted two crucial factors that drove this decision. First, the need for a financial buffer to navigate the unpredictable nature of acquisitions, ensuring they have the resources at hand when the right opportunity arises. Second, the desire to bolster their negotiating position when dealing with entrepreneurs and other potential business partners. Furthermore, the decision to embark on this capital raising journey was also influenced by the growing interest from institutional investors worldwide. Technion's relatively low free float, which indicates a strong commitment from long-term shareholders, attracted significant attention from these investors. Daniel revealed an interesting approach taken during the capital raise, unlike traditional methods where the final share price is determined after investors' commitments, Technion opted for a different route. They set a fixed share price of 2 102 Swedish kroner per share at the beginning of the offering and maintain this price throughout the process, regardless of market fluctuations. While this approach provided certainty for both the company and its investors, it also carried a certain level of risk, especially if the share price had declined during this period. Technion's financing structure plays a pivotal role in supporting its growth and acquisition strategy. Currently, it comprises three key components. First, bank loan. The largest portion of Technion's financing is allocated to bank loans, primarily earmarked for facilitating acquisitions. Typically, these loans in Sweden come with a three-year term, offering the flexibility to roll them into new loans when approximately one year remains. The interest rates of these loans are variable, commonly linked to the Stockholm Interbank Offered Rate, Stibor, with an added margin. Following the recent capital raise, Technion finds itself in a favorable position, essentially debt-free on a net cash basis. The second method is Revolving Credit Facility, RCF. Comprising a smaller portion of Technion's financing, the RCF offers flexibility for various financial needs, although it's not as substantial as bank loans. And third, a checking credit. This credit facility is essential for managing short-term payments to suppliers, ensuring smooth and uninterrupted operations. In an effort to optimize their financing structure, Technion is currently in negotiations with several banks, including their house bank. In Sweden, the standard practice involves 
three-year loan terms with interest rates linked to Stibor plus a margin, as already mentioned. Technion's proactive approach involves planning several years ahead to ensure they have financing that is not only sufficient but also favorable to their business needs. Daniel also shed light on the delicate balance between equity and debt in the company's capital structure. While a moderate level of debt can enhance operational efficiency, it can also introduce increased risks. Technion strives to strike a careful equilibrium mindful of their experiences during the 2008 and 2009 financial crisis. Regarding the duration of credit agreements, Daniel explained the preference for three-year terms due to cost considerations. Regular renewals are performed to match the credit duration with the company's long-term objectives. Additionally, Technion maintains a cautious approach, always considering the option of having no debt to ensure resilience during economic downturns. Technion's approach to coaching and supporting its acquired companies is a dynamic and involving process tailored to the unique needs of each entity within their group. The overreaching goal is continuous improvement, enhancing the performance and integration of these companies into the Technion family. The coaching process unfolds in several phases. Phase 1 – Initial Phase Upon acquisition, Technion provides minimal coaching, primarily focusing on acquainting the newly acquired company with reporting systems and gaining an in-depth understanding of its operations. This phase prioritizes knowledge gathering rather than immediate intervention. Secondly, intensive coaching for new leaders. When Technion appoints a new leader to an acquired company, especially someone without prior experience in the industry or as a CEO, coaching becomes more intensive. It includes sharing the Technion and specific company's narrative, articulating the purpose and ensuring alignment with Technion's overarching goals. Thirdly, balancing growth and capital allocation. Technion acknowledges the challenges of reconciling CEO's aspirations for growth with the necessity of efficiently allocating capital across the group. The key is helping CEOs recognize that growth is not always at the optimal path, particularly if it doesn't yield sufficient returns on capital. Striking this balance is essential for making decisions that benefit both the subsidiary and the broader financial strategy of the group. Fourthly, hurdle rates and capital allocation. The decision-making process regarding capital allocation involves consultation with the headquarters team. Significant investments are subject to board approval, and if an opportunity fails to meet the desired hurdle rate, Technion may choose to allocate capital elsewhere. And finally, concrete support. In addition to coaching, Technion's headquarters team offers tangible assistance in various aspects. This can range from aiding in the recruitment of key personnel to providing insights into specific niches and helping improve the work environment. The aim is to provide support without usurping the operational responsibilities that CEOs should independently manage. And finally, the most interesting part of this conversation was the intriguing conversation between Daniel and the interviewer where they delved into the complex task of valuing Technion as a company. Acknowledging the unique nature of Technion with its diverse subsidiary holdings, they refrained from providing specific numerical valuations, but focused instead on the methodology for assessing its worth. Valuing Technion presents a challenge due to its distinctive attributes, including its ownership of multiple subsidiaries. Several valuation approaches were explored, including comparing Technion to similar companies based on financial ratios, such as EV to EBIT, and conducting a discounted cash flow model. However, discounted cash flow analysis proved challenging due to the unpredictability of when Technion's free cash flow would materialize, 
and what its terminal value might be. To circumvent these challenges, the discussion centered on alternative methods. One suggested approach involves assessing the return on capital generated by Technion subsidiaries, then applying a premium or discount based on future expectations. Another potential avenue is to estimate Technion's value using a multiple of its book value. The conversation also emphasized the significance of considering the investment horizon when valuing a company. Long-term investments require a stronger focus on earnings growth rather than current multiples. The dialogue touched upon biases and importance of transparency regarding one's investment horizon and need to adapt valuation methodologies to suit the unique characteristics of the company under evaluation. Stay tuned so you don't miss out in any other exciting analysis. Uh, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out any future content and I can't wait to see you all in our next financial expedition. Happy investing everyone!